Good afternoon all. Um, I want to look at the structure and delivery of the perfect driving lesson. Um, once we look at this, we can then compare what we do in the real world. Um, and if we're training PDIs, what they're doing in the real world, are there barriers to it happening? What are those barriers? What might we do about it? So we should all be striving to work towards this, this perfect driving lesson. But of course, life being what it is, it won't always work. So the structure looks pretty much like this. At the end of the previous lesson, um, the ADI stroke PDI and the learner will have put together some provisional plans based on the, 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 the feedback loop between the two of you about the previous performance. Okay, so we've learned this today. What's our next logical step? So we put together a provisional plan. So the beginning of the the perfect lesson would be okay so last time we had a provisional plan which was xyz is that still the plan this allows them time to to change their mind and put new plans together but let's assume that it is okay we've looked at the plans we've got them to set some goals for today those goals are smart they're specific they're measurable attainable realistic and time framed we can do it in the area that we're in in the time we've got from the level we're starting from if not then we have input from the ADI or PDI uh, to, to rethink those goals. So we've got some goals that are smart. We put together plans and practice areas that are going to help us to achieve that, to experience the thing that we're working on in small, easily manageable steps to the, to the, to the point where we're, we're working just on what we're working on. So we've got to think about the practice areas and remove any areas that were for example, if you're doing junctions, you don't want to be covering traffic lights or pedestrian crossings. Um, so we experience a short burst of activity. We then reflect between us um, as to how that's gone and what the next steps might be. Our job as the driver training professional is to, to monitor everything that's going on and to help the learner to put together meaningful exercises and plans that help them to learn from things. Learning in small, easily manageable steps. So if we're not biting off more than we can chew, um, or we want to stretch them, but not too much. So it's a small, easily manageable step. We will achieve quickly. Um, if we can do that where we're not working on other things, that declutters the whole process. So at the end of this short segment, we would then ask the question, then what's next? Because the next burst of activity will never be the same as the previous burst of activity. Otherwise, that's not a very good lesson because you're just doing what you've already done. That will get you what you've already got. So that's it in a nutshell. It's a segment of these little bursts of activity and then a reflection analysis, what's next? Then the big reflection and analysis at the end of the session, what are we gonna do next time? So that sets the provisional plan. Now that might seem simplistic, but that truly is all it is. That's how human beings learn using the experiential learning cycle. So with that in mind, your job now is to look at the processes that you have in place, for example, how much of the time during a lesson are you having to deal with things that are not part of today's subject? If that's more than 20%, um, you really need to start thinking about the practice areas that you're using. If you're getting resistance from the learner, what do you want to do today? I don't know. Then that's another area of concern that we need to start thinking about. So I'm not saying that you know you should all be able to do this. What I'm asking you to do is identify where these, the perfect lesson doesn't happen try and identify why the perfect lesson doesn't happen. That then gives us some stuff we can talk about and think about, well, what can we do about that? How can we change that pattern to move it, even in tiny little steps towards that perfect lesson? Now with some people, they're conditioned in such a way that you're always gonna to struggle to get this to happen because they're distrustful of people because of the life experiences they've had, etc., etc. They may have had some bad experiences with other instructors. Um, and just because you're not delivering the perfect lesson doesn't make you less of a person. It just means you've got some stuff that you can work with um, and to get a different outcome next day. Now, I hope that makes sense. Um, feedback via email, uh, via private message, uh, or if enough of you want to do it, we'll come together for a chat. But I'm really conscious that we're not, or rather I'm not getting the engagement from everybody that I really love. And I appreciate that that's because we've got very busy diaries and busy lives and demand is outstripping supply, which is which is great for you. Um, but let's let's try this approach, see how you like it, see how it works, and see if we can get more engagement for everybody and, 
and, and identify some new goals for ourselves as a result of the conversation that we have. I hope that makes sense and I look forward to talking to you in a bit.